Now, the word Reich means empire or kingdom. Many people, of course, are very aware of the term Reich, as in the Third Reich of Adolf Hitler. I contend there will be a Fourth Reich. In fact, I believe that Satan has to have an Antichrist figure for every generation because he does not know when the end of days will be. And so he has to have that man ready to go. And so I believe Hitler was that man for that time. But it was not God's timetable, and so God did not permit it to happen. You say, wait a minute, God will permit these things to happen? Yes, God is in total control. None of this is catching him by surprise. And in fact, he told his disciples, who would become the apostles in Matthew 24, of the signs of his second coming. We spent quite a bit of time in our last series, The Convergence of End Time Events, looking at the things Jesus said were the signs of his second coming, when he will literally physically put his foot back on planet Earth. And he said to his disciples, who became the apostles, that I'm telling you these things so you will not fear. So you will not fear. It also reveals the supernatural nature of the Bible supernatural book written by a supernatural God that reveals that he is in total control. One word for this is he, is he is sovereign. He has total control and authority. He even has total and complete control over Satan. Did you know that? God has total and complete control over Satan. But God will allow, as I've said so many times before, some slack out on the leash of Satan. But God has him on a leash. God will allow some slack on that leash, and God will permit Satan to do certain things. And this will fulfill Bible prophecy. But make no mistake, there's a difference between what God allows and that which God agrees with. I've also said many times there is God's perfect will, and then there is God's providential will, what God allows to happen. This was not the way things were supposed to be. We, well, we were supposed to be in a perfect environment. The Garden of Eden is where it first began with Adam and Eve. And yet sin entered in. And because of the sin of one man, Adam, sin entered into the human race. And we all have sin. The Bible says that. Yea, even I was conceived in sin. Even before I was born, I had a sin nature passed down to me from the first Adam. But Christ, of course, is the one who came to take away the eternal damnation for my sin nature, for my inherited sin nature. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so Christ came to be the perfect sacrifice to pay the full debt of my sin, of your sin, for those of us who would place our faith and trust in him. And when we do that, his righteous life that he lived on this earth is imputed or credited to our account. The righteous life he lived is credited as though I lived it, and the sinful life that I have lived was credited toward Christ as though he lived it, even though he did not. And he was the sinless Savior who paid the sin debt for all who place their faith and trust in Christ. And the Bible says, when you do that, you pass from judgment into life. So make no mistake, this was not how it was supposed to be. But there's God's perfect will and his providential will. But God is still in control. He is sovereign. He is Lord of all. Satan is on a leash. But he will let some slack out, as I said, and Satan will seek to create and build his own earthly kingdom or a Reich. Now, I believe, as I said, that Adolf Hitler was the man of the hour for Satan to be the Antichrist figure. But it was not God's timing, and so God did not allow that to happen. Now, God can use and does use the sinful choices of man to accomplish his purposes. And even in that, we see that one of the goals uh, or one of the prophecies that we see in the Bible well, that came to be greatly fulfilled through the sin of the Third Reich, and that is many Jews fled to Israel. The Bible says that that's exactly what would happen, that they would gather from the four quarters of the earth. The Jews had been scattered in their judgment. God judged them and scattered them. He judged them for their paganism, and he warned them over and over and over again in the Old Testament, and they yet continue to fall into the sin of pagan worship and idolatry. 
much of the very religions that were birthed at the Tower of Babel. And he warned them to knock it off, and they wouldn't. And he finally scattered them and judged them. But he said in his mercy, he would gather them together once again. And so we see in 1948, Israel became a nation. Now, make no mistake, the Jews, by and large, are still in unbelief. And unbelievers do what unbelievers will do. But there is coming a great revival with the Jewish people. And this is what the tribulation period is really all about. That's seven years when Antichrist will be here on earth and do many horrific things. But it is going to catch the attention of the Jews, and they will realize the one that they crucified was indeed Yeshua, our Messiah. And the Jews, many of them, will become great evangelists. And so there's a spiritual battle going on right now between God and Satan. But make no mistake, the Bible's very clear who's going to win this. Satan right now is trying to establish a fourth Reich, I believe. And I believe he'll get it. And that's why the book is called The Coming Religious Reich. Reich means empire or kingdom. And Satan will get that kingdom for a period of time, a very short period of time. And then make no mistake, God's kingdom will crush Satan's kingdom, Daniel chapter 2. And of God's kingdom, there will be no end. Let me ask you this question. Do you believe that the great reset of Klaus Schwab and Henry Kissinger and John Kerry and Noah Havari, um, and I could just go down the list of world leaders, Justin Trudeau, Angela Merkel, so many of the young global leaders that Klaus Schwab mentored and then dropped all over the world. Do you believe that their great reset is mentioned in the Bible? I do. I believe we can absolutely positively find the ideas, the philosophies, the worldviews of the great reset found in the Bible. Just last week, the folks in Davos, Switzerland, held their World Economic Forum and had their international conference, and we reported on it quite a bit, and we'll continue to report on what we find coming out of that meeting. And what do they want with the Great Reset? They want global governance. They want to create a partnership between big government and big business to implement a great global reset and a new world order. Their words, not mine. So I ask again, are the philosophies and the ideas of the Great Reset found in the Bible?